Hey everybody, I am doing a Zoominar at 1 o'clock, which will be any moment now. And since I'm doing the Zoominar, I thought, well, what the heck, I'll do it live on Facebook too. I teach people, as you guys know, I'm a networking expert. I'm a business networking expert and positioning um, consultant. And hi, Jessica. Jessica just popped on to the, to the Zoom. Hey, sweet pea. Let me start my recording over here. Aha! So, I am going to attempt to do two things at once, Zoominar and Facebook Live. And I'm just going to give everyone about four or five minutes to pop on to the Zoominar. Because if you're on the Zoominar, and please, if you're on Facebook Live, don't even ask me how to, how to do it. Actually, Jessica is on, and she's one of my wonderful, lovely assistance if there's any way that she knows how to uh, put the zoom in our link over on my Facebook live then you guys can pop on that way as well but the, the reason the zoom in our live might be good is because I'm actually going to show a couple of dozen photos of different events that I've done live over the years and when people talk to me about Cami how can I network better how can I have better results uh, how can I start being more outgoing? How do I attract clients? How do I um, get more credibility in the marketplace? How can I be the event? Um, this is what this is all about. So now that I'm doing meetups, you will notice if you look on my uh, CamiBaker.com calendar, if you look on my meetups, all the meetups that I have, I now have meetups in Boston, in Miami, in um, uh, San Diego, in uh, the Silicon Valley, and soon I'll have some in Ohio because I've been invited to speak in Ohio too. And the deal is, as long as I am going to be speaking at, um, at, at in different towns in different states, I might as well set up other venues to speak as well. In other words, if you're going to fly out there, don't just fly for one event and go for a lot. So if you are in business, if you're an entrepreneur, and you are wanting to get more credibility, more, more face time, more stage time, attract clients to come to you so that you're not always out there chasing them around, the best way that I have found in 15 years is to be the event. So for those of you who are popping on, I'm doing Zoom and I'm doing Facebook Live. So I'll be looking back and forth, so I'm not crazy. Um, I'm looking back and forth to, to give a little bit of camera time to both sides. So I'll start out as it is right at 1 o'clock, and I'm not sure how many people are going to get on Zoom, but I know I do have some folks here on Facebook Live, so I'll go ahead and get started with some of the material. Now, when you notice on my Meetup, and when you notice on my calendar that I'm live at events, I just did one... Um, on the South Shore in um, Marblehead, Massachusetts. I'll be doing one coming up, let's see, uh, la, 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 April 11th. I'll be at the Microsoft Store in, uh, in the Boston area, Natick actually. May 1st, I'll be out in San Jose in California. And then June 14th, I'll be in Miami. And the reason that I share that with you is I don't have to be live physically in your town to be able to teach this information, hence why I'm doing a Zoominar and I am doing a Facebook Live so that I can share the information here. So I'm going to give you the overall premise of what does it look like to be the event. What does it look like to stop wasting time networking? Networking wastes time with random activity. Net webbing leverages time through structured strategic planning. And so when we are being the event, boy are we leveraging our time. We are actually on the stage as the expert. And so I'm going to give you some uh, different tips as to what doing this with me looks like. So first of all, we want to talk about when we are going out networking, people ask all the time about what, look, I, I know that you go early in the morning. I know that you go at lunchtime. I know that you go at night. I know that you get babysitters. I know that you go in and you grab a bunch of cards. 
I know that you go and you spray out a bunch of cards. And I know that you're not following up with people. Why, why you're going and not following up, I don't know. But I've been there and I've done that. I too have done that. Uh, 16 years ago, when I first started really hardcore networking, I didn't even know where to wear my realtor pin as a real estate agent. I was grabbing a bunch of cards too. The only reason why I was able to be as successful as I was was because I was aggressive, I was tenacious, I was hungry, I was scared, I was fear-based, I did not want to have a J-O-B, I didn't want to have a boss, I had a two-year-old daughter, I was newly sober, and I felt like I was unhirable, I felt like... Um, you know, I, I, I had this two-year-old daughter and I did not want to put her in daycare and all of that. And so I needed to, to support her. I needed to pay our rent. I needed to feed her. Um, I had just gotten sober. I needed to keep my hair, my head clear. And so I had to make it work. So when I went out networking, um, I was spraying my card all over the place. I was grabbing a bunch of cards. I was doing all these different things that, that I watch people do. I've been to thousands of events. I've coached one-on-one -on -one in groups of 15 or 20, 50, 100. I've been on stages as large as 30,000 people talking about networking and how to make it work. Networking doesn't work. Netwebbing works from the leveraging of your time as opposed to spending more. So before we even go to an event, we can start to set our intention into motion by researching, reaching out, researching, and relationship building before we even go. So we want to have intention, pay attention while we're there to create the retention. And what this Zoominar and what this Facebook is about today is about how to do that by being the event. When you be the event, you are positioning yourself as the expert. When you walk in, you're not just another bozo on the bus sitting in the audience, which, hey, listen, I'm another bozo on the bus all the time. I walk into events all the time. You got to go to events to meet people. I get that. And you got to start somewhere. But I'm talking about that you can immediately now, right away, this week, this month, start to be invited to be the expert in the room, just like I was invited last Friday to all these wonderful people that I'm now following up with who want to learn how to be the event. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting together this group program so that I can help people all over the country without them having to wait for me to come and me to meet them in San Jose, in Miami, in San Diego, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to play with my technology for a minute. I'm going to move my screen around. I'm recording on Zoom, but I'm just going to um, move this out of the way. I'm going to pull up some notes that I have. And if you're on my Zoom, you'll also be able to see when I show some photos and I'll explain the photos to you as I go through for my friends on Facebook Live so that you can see, um, so, that you, so that you'll know why I'm showing these photos of all these just dozens, hundreds of events that I've done over the years, anywhere from, um, from a networking event, like a, like a business networking event, to large events where I had the Remax hot air balloon there, to events that I did with uh, Ronald McDonald House, doing fundraisers, things like that. And so these photos will, will show you about that. But when I teach people about being the event, here's the thing. Number one, what is your mindset? And people want to know what to say, what to say, what to say. What do I say when people ask me what do I do? Cammie, how do I get booked to be on the stage? How do I get people to want me to be on their stage? All of these things. but we have got to start with our mindset first. When people come to me and say, well, I don't know if such and such group even has speakers. I don't, I don't know if they'll even do that. The, the question isn't, will they do it or have they done it? The question is, why are you even questioning if they want to have a speaker? Because if your material is so good, they should be begging you to come speak. So number one is our mindset. Who are you? Who do you want to be seen as? So the first thing that we need to work on, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether it's in a group setting, is talking about how you feel about yourself. Do you give yourself compliments? Can you take a compliment? I was working with a client yesterday whom um, I've actually fired as a client because he just is not coachable. 
He's not open to just receiving information. He's not open to getting out on the field and playing. And so are you open to being coachable? Can you give yourself a, client, a, 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 a compliment? If I were to ask you to tell me five or ten things that are fabulous about you, how fast can you rattle them off or do you have to really think about it? Or are you one of the kind of people that I normally meet that they can't really say anything nice about themselves and they can't really think about um, goals that they want, but they'll tell you what they don't want. People can tell you what they don't want. So I'll ask my, what's, what are your goals for this year? Well, I'll tell you what I don't want. I don't want to struggle for money and I don't want to drive this beater car and I don't want this bad relationship. But to actually talk about what they do want is very difficult for the average person. So the first way that we want to work together is to look at your mindset, how you think about yourself. When somebody gives you a compliment, when somebody says, oh, Kimmy, that's a nice blouse, do you say, oh, this old thing, I got it off the sales rack, or yeah, my mom gave me this, or I've had it for years, or oh, yeah, it's got a little stain on it, but yeah, it's a nice shirt. Or, like, do you do that type of thing, or can you just simply say, thank you, thank you. So our mindset is really important, and we're going to work on that a lot, because when it comes time to get booked, to get booked to be on a stage, whether you are scheduling your own events, when I set up my own meetups, I'm you know booking the the um, the venue. I'm I'm inviting people to come. I'm putting together the information, or whether I'm sending my speaker packet and calling or emailing and talking to someone who is the organizer of another group. Either way, how am I talking about myself? How am I presenting myself? I always talk about how do you present package, posture, position, the product, which is you. So the first thing that we need to talk about is your mindset. Number two, what we want to talk about is why are you wanting to be the event? So why would you want to be the event? And there's a lot of reasons for that. I talked to a woman yesterday who said, she said, well, Kimmy, I'm, I'm moving to a new area. And so I'm not sure if I really want to do anything right here. Talked to another guy last week. Well, right now our, our, our office is right here, but by the summertime we're moving our office to this other, to the next town over. Guys, why do you want to be the event? Because I can tell you one of the best things about being the event is that when you can put on an event, whether it is speaking to a group or whether it's doing fundraising activities or what, like this particular one guy, his business partner does like a coffee with Christy thing. You guys have seen me do coffee with Christy. And so, hi, Elena. Elena, I'm doing Zoom and Facebook Live, so I'm kind of back and forth for any of you who are wondering why am I looking all over the place. Um, but his friend, his, his business partner does this coffee with so-and-so thing. And I said, this is a great way to be the event. Gives you something to talk about. So why are you being the event? You know, are you wanting to educate? Are you wanting to lead generate? Are you wanting to build your email list? Are you, are you doing these events just to build your SEO? Did you know that Meetup plays really, really nice with Google? Facebook and Google, not so much. Meetup and Google, uh-huh. So when you're doing Meetups, when you have all these Meetups, when, when, when there's Meetups out there that say Cami Baker in networking, Cami Baker be the event, Cami Baker positioning expert, when that's all over the place and all these different meetups, it is helping my SEO and helping me to, to bring people to my website, bring people to me. So there's a lot of reasons to be the event. When Are you, let me see, let me just look at some of my notes. Are you wanting to create a movement? Here's an interesting way of looking at it. For me, uh, teaching people how to net web as opposed to network, I'm putting together a movement of the worldwide net web creating the worldwide net web. And so anyone who's in my programs, whether it's the group programs or the one-on-ones, anybody who is in that are, are going to be invited to when I have the worldwide net web, the worldwide net webbing event in Boston later on towards the end of this year. And I only want people there who understand being a, being a contribution, collaborating. This is not about competition people that want to work together and support each other. Because see, the thing about a net web as opposed to network, networking doesn't work because it wastes time with random activity. Net webbing, as you're creating that web, think about the, the spider. When she's creating a web, she knows exactly where 
to put the connections in that windowsill, in that tree, wherever it is that she's creating the web, so that it's a strong foundation. And then she sits back and what does she do? She simply waits for that which she wants to come to her. And so when we are doing the Worldwide NetWeb event, I want people there that are of that same uh, generous mindset of creating the NetWeb that help each other. So we want to figure out why are you wanting to be the event? Do you want to be local? Do you want to be regional? Do you want to be national? Do you want to be international? These are things to think about because it's all different ways of marketing. For example, if you are a real estate agent, you're rather local. You know, you need to be like within a 25 mile radius of where you do all of your business. You should still network and create a net web all over the world, even if just to open up your mindset. But when you're doing an event, like you'll see some of the photos that I did when I was with Remax, when I brought the hot air balloon and did events, it was to, for me to gain um, notoriety and credibility locally. I wanted people locally to hire me as their agent. So that was a local being the event. I'll show you some others that I've done that position me as an expert nationally and globally. So you need to think about that. How are you wanting to position? Are you local, regional, national, or international? Another module that I go through is about cause. Who do you want? Do you want someone to be a cause that you're partnering with and why? There's pros and cons to having this, for example. You'll see, if you're on Zoom with me, you'll see um, some of the photos and, uh, and of, in the replay you'll see them. Of course, Facebook Live, you won't see them, but I'll describe that sometimes I've partnered with the Ronald McDonald House, for example. Now, the Ronald McDonald House is an international company, organization, that has outreach everywhere. People recognize Ronald McDonald House, American Cancer Society, um, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, etc., People recognize that those groups have large thousands, tens of thousands of volunteers, people that they've helped, people that support them, etc. So to partner with the cause like that is a beautiful thing. You now have a ton of more people in your network to play with, to help you promote your event, etc., etc. Ronald McDonald House would help me promote their, the antique car show that I was doing because they knew that the more money we made, the more money they made and the more recognition they got. So there's benefits to actually having a big organization that you partner with when you're doing the events. A drawback to that is you also have to go through their red tape. So for example, Make-A-Wish Foundation is an awesome foundation. I even know the guy Frank, and I can never pronounce his last name, Frank, I apologize. He's even got a book coming out, actually a movie that's being made about him and his life. He created Make-A-Wish and when I see him at events and I talk to him about it, he says, Cammie, I created Make-A-Wish and they won't even return my phone call. Because there's so much bureaucracy and red tape to get around and getting something done, you know, and, and then putting their name on it. So having a big organization can be a big thing or, or maybe you don't want that. Sometimes I've created things like where I did an event with the Live and Let Live Farm in, um, near Concord, New Hampshire. Now, they didn't get involved. They didn't really help me promote it. I just gave all of the proceeds to these antique car shows I did to the Live and Let Live Farm. So it was all my event, and I made the decisions, and I decided everything about it. I created the flyers. Now, it was much more work for me, but I also didn't have to go ask permission or get the board to come together and sign off on things. And for me, as the Mingle to Millions maverick, as the gypsy, as the rebel that I am, looking to get permission is kind of painful for me. I have no interest in getting permission from people. I'd much rather beg for forgiveness than ask for permission <laughs> if given the, the, the difference. So there's always a good and bad. And so when I work with people and we do a group or when we do it one-on-one, -on -one, we'll talk about who are you passionate about? This woman that I talked to yesterday that I'm going to work with is extremely passionate about the American Cancer Society because she herself is a survivor of the Cancer Society. And check this out. She's almost torn in her head between do I do things for my business because she's already a speaker. Do I do things for my business because I need to generate income and I need my business to run. But I also would love to spend time 
promoting and helping the American Cancer Society because they helped to save my life and I believe strongly in their cause. And so I told her, I said, um, Andrea, I said, Andrea, you don't have to pick or choose. What if, what if you actually did both of them? What if you were an event where the proceeds went to the American Cancer Society and the sheer fact that you're doing it also builds your business because people love doing business with people that are doing cause marketing, that are partnering up and doing something good in the world. So, so there's that. Another thing that we're going to talk about when we do this group program is we're going to talk about how to find a venue. See, here's the difference. People will say, oh, Cami, I've done events. I've done networking events and they don't work. You are absolutely right. Of course they don't work. Networking events don't work because of the way people put them together. They put up an event for June 1st and then they hope and pray that 100 people show up and if they're doing some kind of fundraising, they hope that they raise $1,000 and they're waiting for June 1st to come around for, for it to happen then. Here's the difference. Here's my unique sales proposition in this. Here's what makes this whole thing different. That June 1st event, great. We want people there. We want a lot of people there. We want to raise a lot of money. We want the media there. I can help you get the media there. Nobody cares about your ad, about your 10% off ad or your free eyelashes ad or whatever, but they care about stories. And we can get a story written about you as this event that's coming up and this heart-centered entrepreneur business person is doing the blah 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 for the American Cancer Society, the stories that get written are powerful for your business and for the thing that you're passionate about. So, moving up to that, now you've got your event on June 1st for example, well now you've got two or three months that when you are out networking, you can use that event as something to talk about. Stop with your 30 second elevator pitches, nobody gives a shit. Nobody wants to hear your 30 second minutes, seconds of fame. You're bored with it, they're bored with it. People ask you, what do you do? You go into this, you know, ding, ding, ding. It's time to salivate like the dog. Time for me to tell what I do. And nobody's listening. They're looking around the room, they could care less. When you have something fun to promote, you're excited about it. When somebody says, hey, what do you do? Now you can actually say, well, you know what? I'm so glad that you asked me that. Because actually what I'm doing is, I'm promoting an antique car show, all the proceeds go to the Live and Let Live farm, I'm looking for antique cars, I'm looking for antique car lovers, I'm looking for people who want to rent a, a booth like Mary Kay or uh, people who sell car products or you know people that want to be a vendor, I'm looking for karate dojo places to do demonstrations, etc, etc. So it gives you something fun to talk about and it helps and now you need a venue. So if it's a car show, like last year I did a car show for, with a group called um, Hope Dove. We did something called uh, um, uh, Lowell Cares Car Show in Lowell. Now we needed a venue that held a couple hundred cars that was several acres big and we did it at Regatta Field and there was only so many venues that would work. But if you're doing something that you need to seat a hundred people like in a conference room or something, then you can spend a few a, a month looking for venues, vetting venues, talking to people about, hey, you know, you go to this boring networking event and say people say, What do you do? And you can say, Well, actually what I'm looking for is a venue that holds a hundred people. Who do you know? Where should I go? How can I talk to people? In other words, having an event is not just about the event. It is about all of the foreplay leading up to it. The dozens, the hundreds of people, resources, relationships that happen on your way to the revenue. We want to talk about how are you going to monetize? Do you want to have sponsors for your event? Do you want to talk to other speakers about coming to your event? I can talk to you about how to talk to those speakers about why they don't want to just show up June 1st. They actually want to be your co-promoter. They want to promote. So let's look at this. If you wanted to have three other speakers there, maybe for example, I'm just throwing out different ideas. Maybe you're doing a first time home buyer seminar. You're the real estate agent and now you need a, a, a title company to explain that and a home, in, uh, home inspector or a home stage or whatever it is that you're looking for. Now you can actually use the event that you're going to do 
as a way to talk to all those people, build relationships with them, which you need anyway in your industry, and it gives you a way to explain to them, listen, don't just wait and show up to do your five-minute spiel on the stage. This is a way for you to reach out and touch all the people in your database. This is a way for you to bring value to them. You want to have your best clients in the room. One of the things I'm doing right now, I'm working with some doctors in the Bedford area about putting together an event so that their whole strip mall um, gets involved in doing something together. And the thing is, if every one of those 10 businesses invites 10 of their best clients, the best way to get business is to put your 10 best clients in the room with 50 or 100 other people and just let nature take its course. Those people are naturally going to say nice things about you and that's how you want to get business. So there's so many ways to make an event that is win-win-win for everyone. You build your business, you build your credibility, if you're um, doing something that benefits a, uh, an organization, you're helping them get community awareness, you're helping them raise money, etc. Let's see, what else can we talk about here? We're going to talk about how to promote your event through the meetup, through uh, Eventbrite, through Facebook events, uh, through all these different ways. And when you do it through meetup, it's not just about um, putting up the meetup and letting it go. Remember, there's the research, reach out, and relationship build. When I talk to people, I talk to them about stop just, there's so many meetups that don't work. That, that fail miserably, that have three or four people that, that join the group and none that ever show up at their events. If you're putting on meetups, if you're doing that type of thing and you're not, um, you're not uh, getting, the, um, getting the attendance that you want, it's because of the way that you've positioned it. The, um, the tagline, the, the subject matter is boring. You're not speaking to people about what it is that's keeping them up at night. So there's different ways of doing that. Let me get on down. Oh, my God. Guys, the way that you run an event, physically at the event, both logistically and psychologically, how you're running the event. Now, mind you, I have gone to thousands of events. I have spoken at hundreds of events. I have been to events 15 30 minutes, an hour early, a lot. I was taught many years ago, 15 minutes early is on time, on time is late, late is unacceptable. That's for your job, that's for a date, that's for having coffee with somebody, and that plays out for networking too. Because when I was going to all these network marketing events back in the day, and I would get there early, and I help people to sign in, and I helped set up the chairs, and they taught me, they explained to me having music before the event so that people didn't have that weird awkward awkwardness. I can't tell you how often, because now that I'm so aware of this, I'll go to an event, and, it, and, and it's quiet. And people are walking in, and they're signing in, and it's awkwardly quiet, almost to the point where you feel like you need to whisper, almost like you're in church. Guys, have some music on. Not like a disco, but have music on so that it breaks that weirdness. It gets people bouncing, gets the energy up, gets them flowing. So there's all kinds of logistics in how to put on an event. From how to set up the chairs, not having round tables everywhere where people aren't facing you. Which way to face so that you have their attention. Check it out. If you're standing... And there's windows behind you with people walking by, just for a big example. The whole time you're on stage, the people that are watching are also watching what's going on in the windows behind you. They're distracted. They're not paying attention to you. So you want to position yourself in the room in such a way that you have their undivided attention. You also want to position yourself so that when you're having photos made and videos taken, because you're going to use those, like I'm getting ready to show you, for your credibility, you want to make sure that you're positioned in such a way that the video comes out good. A couple months ago, I did an event, and the way that it was, I didn't think about this. And the videographer that was there didn't think about it. We set this up, and where I was standing, it was a beautiful conference room. 
but there was also a full kitchen in the conference room because they used it for that for all that kind of stuff. So where I was standing was next to a breakfast bar, and it was perfect the way that everybody was seated and everything. But at the end, the photos that were taken looked like I was standing in somebody's kitchen. And you'll see a couple of them on my Zoom in just a minute. You'll see that there's there are things that you need to think about, not only physically, but logistically meaning, um, uh, excuse me, psychologically. Have somebody introduce you. Have somebody introduce you. Guys, if you walk up on that stage, whether it's your event you're putting on or you're, or you're speaking at somebody else's event, if they don't know how to introduce you, you are dead in the water dead in the water. When I was in network marketing, I learned the power of edification, of credibility, of third party saying something. If they say, hey, here's Bob, and you walk up on the stage and you're just Bob, you can see the body language of people like, all right, what you got to say, Bob? Or if that person says, guys, we got Bob coming to the stage. Bob is a master. He's been doing this for 15 years. We are so privileged to have him here. He's just written five books, and he normally speaks to 10,000 people at a time. He's only doing this for me as a favor because normally he gets paid $10,000 to do an event. He's doing this for us today because he's a friend of mine. He's got some great information. You want to get your pen and paper out. You want to take notes because when Bob hits the stage, you're going to learn things that are going to change your life. Wow. People, they, you literally see them set up, and you see them start getting ready to take notes. Same guy, same guy, same person, how they're being introduced is so important. So there's all these different things that I teach my clients and my groups as to how to do this. You want to learn how to engage with your audience. You want to make eye contact. You want to be able to nod your head and get them agreeing with you. You want to smile. You want to get them active. As a matter of fact, the old version of educate, 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 slide, 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 all the bullet points, etc., is really going by the wayside. If people just wanted your information, they could watch a YouTube, they could read a book. They are coming because they want the experience. They want to see you having them get up and do exercises. They want to feel something. They want to learn by experience. So you want to do that type of thing too. Another thing I teach my clients is how to mingle at the event. you got to be able to mingle at the event. Guys, if you're setting up an event and you're showing up, I talk to people all the time, Kimmy, I've been doing events for years and really they haven't really been working. Well, what do you do when you get there? You know, number one, are you researching, reaching out, relationship building before you go? No. No. Nobody ever does that. But the second thing is, when you're getting there, are you being engaging? Like when I get to an event, I'm not such a, such a, a big speaker that I'm hiding out. Now, when I've got 2,000 or 5,000 people s sitting in the audience waiting on me, I won't be able to go out and schmooze and mingle and build relationship, etc. But... By the time I've got two to 5,000 people sitting in a room that are there just to see me, I won't need to do that as much because they'll have already read my book. They'll have already seen so much about me. They'll know who I am. But right now, I get out and I do that mingling. I want them to feel comfortable. By the time I get on the stage, they already feel like they know me. Instead of this staunch business person walking on the stage, being really uptight, etc., etc., they've already gotten to know me. I've already learned some of their names, etc., so there's a lot of ways that you can make your, uh, your events go off a lot better. Guys, are you collaborating at the very end? Here's the beauty of being the event. You are attracting people that you want to do business with. How would you like to actually have the clients that you want come to you? What if you put on an event that the, the tagline, the promotion, the marketing for it said things that only brought people to you that would want to do business with you. For example, the name of this event, the Zoominar, and one, the next ones that I do live are going to be something along the lines of, do you want your clients to come to you? Do you want... To, uh, to attract clients that come up to you, give you their card, and want to do business? Do you want to create um, 
credibility in the marketplace? Do you want to be the event? Do you want to start speaking and talking and training and educating people and building business that way? Because see, now the people that are coming to this Zoominar, that are coming to my events, are people who want to do that. I love teaching how to network. I can teach you how to network all day long. But people don't always understand the benefit of that. They don't understand how poorly they've been doing it and that, that by strategically having a plan that they leverage their time networking as opposed to wasting it going out. But people today do want to learn how to get on stages. They want to be a speaker. They want to have people come to the room to listen to them for whatever reason that that is. And so when I put in the title that that's what this is about, I'm bringing to me the people that want to be the event. And that way, at the end of the talk, when I say, who here is wanting to do exactly what I'm doing and be the event? And when they raise their hand, and they should all be, because that's why they're there, I just attracted and brought to me the people who want that which I am teaching. Same thing for you. If you're a financial advisor, if you do websites, if you um, are, I met a woman who does singing bowls. If you want to educate people on how that helps them and betters their life. I've got friends who teach uh, women that when they have better orgasms, they are better business people. Well, you know, they, they can walk into a typical business networking venue and talk about that. If, if they find people that actually want them to talk about that. But when they put on their own events, because by the way, Sex sells, sexuality. I just went to an event in um, New York City about two months ago, and it was the woman wrote a book, and this is the name of the book. I didn't name it. The name of the book is Pussy, and there's something about um, understanding ourselves sexually, sexuality, that is very attractive to people. But the point is, is no matter what your topic is, you can, and she had 2,000 people in the room, and she's a, a, a New York Times bestseller. And she has tribes of thousands of people all over the world, and she makes millions of dollars from that topic. So whatever your topic is, you can't attract people to come into your room. I got another guy that I'm working with who um, they are project managers. They can take from, nap from napkin, hey, what, is, what do you want your building to look like, all the way through engineers, architects, contractors, etc., from napkin to fruition. In other words... They'll draw out what is your building going to look like, and a year or two later, bam, there's your building, here it is. In other words, they can take it through the whole pro process. And I'm working with him on how he can get in front of groups of, say, brand new architects and engineers and teach them the, the three reasons why architects fail when they get out into the workplace, blah, 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 the things that he can teach. He can actually track them to start being the ones that bring him business. In other words, there's a lot of ways to make this work. So, at the end of, of your speaking engagement, you are, um, you're going to have people come up. You're going to have people bring you a business card. They see you as the edified expert. They're going to ask you to speak. They're going to ask you to work with them, etc., etc. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. When I do a speaking engagement and they come up and ask me to speak at another place, rinse and repeat. I spoke down in Miami for three weeks. Uh, as some of you know, just got back a couple of weeks ago. I've already been called to speak at a larger event that's going on June 14th. So what I'll do is I will fly down for this event. But I'm not flying down just for this one two-hour event. I will reach out to my other contacts there and people that I don't even know and I'll get booked two or three other times and I'll put on my own meetup so that I have yet another one to speak at. In other words, I won't fly down to Miami. I won't fly out to San Francisco, to San Diego. I won't fly out to San Jose. I won't fly up to Ohio just to do one event anymore. Now that I know how this works, I will fly out and do four or five events at a time. That's what I teach people how to do. There is a lot of bonus material, and then I'm going to show you some photos. Once you've understood all this, check out these higher up. Higher up. Let me just read what Alina says. Love, love your book. 
It has helped me tremendously. I know you love the book. I know you love it. And I can't wait for the damn thing to get published. I know you're working really hard on that, on getting it out. Whoever does my programs, by the way, is going to get a copy of the book autographed because it might mean something one day that I autographed it. Here's some bonuses for people who learn how to do the event. We haven't even talked about doing the speaker packet yet. Speaker packet is really important, but when you're doing your own events, when you're putting together your own events like meetups, etc., guess what? You don't even need a speaker packet. You don't even need one. You're not having to prove yourself to anybody. You're, you're putting on your own event. Here's the thing about the speaker packet, though. Last couple of uh, times I've worked with people and putting together their speaker packet, here's what came of making a speaker packet that I never even thought of. When you are putting together a speaker packet and you are going through the people that you've worked with, your one-on-one -on -one clients, the places that you've spoken, etc., etc., you start to realize, wow, I worked with some really incredible people. Wow, I've spoken on some really impressive stages. Wow. And it's because of the way that I show people how to do their, their speaker packet. So it helps you to feel good about what you're offering to people. And as, like, for example, when I'm doing these things, now I'm going to go speak in Miami on June 14th. Great, I'm already booked there. But when I do reach out to other groups, I can send them my speaker packet. And I'm pretty clear, a lot of them won't even read it, but the fact that I have one and the fact that I can say, hey, I'll send you my speaker packet, a lot of the times that's good enough. But there is one woman in Miami that I met this last time. She had a big event called Truepreneur. Clara, Clara, I love you. Clara, I hope you're watching this. And if you're not, I, I hope that you get to watch the replay. When I sent her my speaker packet, it was so impressive the way that I laid it out with that I that I'd done speaking engagements for Berkshire Hathaway, Ronald McDonald House, um, Century 21, Microsoft, and just named out all of the, been on HGTV house centers, blah, 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 and just had a hundred different things I had listed out. By the time we got on the phone together, it wasn't, well, why should I hire you? And we'll put you on a list so that if anything comes up, we'll let you know. By the time I got on the phone with her, she said, oh, and I, this is what I could hear in her voice. Oh, I'm so glad you called. I, I looked through your packet. Listen, she said, I'm in a meeting right now, but I, I, I want to talk to you. Can you please, please, um, can we talk later on today? I could hear her urgency in her voice that she was so impressed with that speaker packet that she really wanted me to go ahead. I haven't even had this on. I hope you've been able to see, hear me the whole time. That was stupid. Um, anyway... <laughs> So uh, my recording for Zoom may, maybe didn't turn out, you know, we all learn. Um, but the thing is, is that by the time I got on the phone with her, she was so excited that she, um, that she, she gave me 30 minutes on her stage, and it was awesome. So we're going to work on your speaker packet. We're going to work on how to talk to people about partnering up with them and having them promote your events when you come to town. All these different group places where I have my... Um, my uh, um, my meetups now. I've got other people that are promoting my meetups. I'm promoting their meetups. I'm creating this net web of people so that even though I don't live there, now when I come back to their area every three or four months, my group has still been growing because I've been promoting their events. They are more than willing to promote my one event every three or four months because I've been promoting, promoting theirs for a quarter. And it just grows. There are a ton. Let, let me just give you repurposing your event. When you get your events videotaped, photographed, you are building your credibility. You can have them ripped and transcribed into blogs. You can make a book out of it, etc., etc. So, for all my people on Zoom, I don't even know if you could hear me because I have this stupid thing and I apologize for that. But let me get on back over to Mizuminar. And I see that Ron is on here with me. He's got his volume turned off. Thank you. Um, let me actually go ahead and share my screen. Let me share my screen on Zoom. And see if I can do this right. Da, 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 da. Can, can we do this? Hey, Ron. Okay, so now that I'm sharing... All right, here are some photos that I just want to share. 
of, um, of different events that I've done. And for, so all these events, you can see that there's anywhere from 10 to 500 people in the room. This is an event that I put on where I taught about real estate classes. This is me speaking in front of those events. And I know you guys can't see these, but I'll explain to you why they're important. Um, this is a picture sideways of me with Darren Hardy. When you start becoming a speaker and you can get pictures with people that are of substance, this picture of me with Darren Hardy, who is the publisher of Success Magazine, when people know who Darren Hardy is, that's gold. The fact that I'm standing in a picture with Darren Hardy is impressive. Here's a picture of me with some other people, including Ronald McDonald. So here's this guy dressed up as Ronald McDonald. Clearly shows that I was at a Ronald McDonald event, and it was at a Ferrari dealership with Ferrari in the background. Here's a picture of me with some people at the Ronald McDonald house. That's my daughter with me on the left. Um, here's another thing. When you're doing events, you can get your children involved. If you want to get your children involved in stuff, and you want to be, um, you know, you say, well... I don't have time to do my business, to uh, do things that I'm passionate about, and get my family involved. I've only got so much time. How can I do it all together? So in this particular photo, there's me spending quality time with my daughter. I'm teaching her about giving back and being a, a, a contributing member of society. I am taking photos that the media put out in that area about me working with Ronald McDonald House. Win, 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 win all the way around. Let's see, what else can I get to on the next screen here? Oh, here's me speaking in front of about 500 people at an event. Now, uh, this photo of me in front of that many people helps even just right now, just to show people that if I can get, on, if I can get myself on the stage in front of 500 people, I can help you do it. This is me at a, a, a guy named Ro, uh, Norm. Norm, the psychic, has been in this area. He does public TV access uh, TV shows. Been doing it for 20 years. He's got a huge following. And, and whether you know who Norm is or not, here's a picture of me at the studio um, with a TV personality. It's great for PR. Here's me doing a, um, a TV show. Century 21 and myself did a TV show. I was the host for the TV show. And I made sure to get pictures of the cameraman in the shot showing um, that it was being filmed, that it was live. This is me doing another speaking of, event. This is on a stage. Uh, Ron was actually with me at this one. This is at the Sage Summit with all these different companies that we were speaking with. This is me at Ron's. Uh, Ron does a, a radio show. So some pictures of me doing um, a, a radio show. This is great for credibility. You want the press to know what you're doing. This is another place where I did a speaking engagement. They had my logo up on this big banner. So I took, her of my, uh, took a picture of myself with, um, with, with the banner. This guy, excuse me, this guy is TJ Fox. TJ Fox uh, teaches people exactly what I'm showing you how to do as far as be a speaker but just differently because the way that I do it is I help you to position yourself as an expert and he himself said get photos with people because you never know who knows who they are and you can use that to show people that these are the people you're networking with another picture of me having a TV um, a camera crew doing a, 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 a commercial with me uh, here I am on a, a friend of mine uh, Lindy Eldridge has a TV show called the, the Happiness Jungle this is a, a clip from one of the TV spots that I did with her. This is me on a stage at Habitude Warriors. Guys, this is not the Cami Baker show. What I'm trying to show you here is a way to use all of these events to position yourself as an expert. I can use these photos anywhere, anytime to show credibility. And because I was on that stage, there were also hundreds of people watching me and then coming up at the end of it, giving me their business card wanting to do business with me. This is a more recent meetup event that I did where I packed the room with people who were interested in my material. Once again, I showed up and I had 30 people come that wanted to do business with me. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't it smarter 
to instead of showing up at a networking event, handing out your card, explaining to people what you do, why you do it, why they should do business with you, wouldn't it be smarter to just promote you and when you get there, they're all there to do business with you? Uh, that's an example of, you can see the kitchen in the background. This is another event I did. You can see down at the bottom, that was um, the, the, the little monitor of me. All these people, I'm teaching them all how to network. This is at one of the events where I brought the Remax hot air balloon. Are you kidding me? When you get the Remax hot air balloon um, at an event, you can, um, we had the, 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 the media there. We had um, a, a newspaper, radio, TV, etc. And this is a picture of me with the governor of the state of New Hampshire. Point is, is I did things that, that got the, the governor to come out and I got a picture with him. That picture was gold at the time to use for PR. It was in the newspaper. Cami Baker doing business with Governor Lynch. This is one of the car shows I did. As you can see, that the... the People here that I'm giving a trophy to, um, having a little bit of, uh, um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what their uh, physical challenge was, but the proceeds went to their organization and just, just shows me as a giving person in society. So there's a beautiful day. You'll notice in the background all the antique cars, brought about 100 antique cars to that show. This is when I did um, My House is Worth What? So as a real estate agent, I would get on TV shows, My House is Worth What, HGTV, are you kidding me? The next one I did was um, House Hunters, which was even better, um, but you'll notice I got a picture of myself with the camera crew, because that was good for PR. This is another big event where I packed it out more people that I packed it out. This is funny. This is me playing Ellie Mae um, in a little commercial that was going on and um, this photo was was put out locally. Local business person does this free thing. And I could just go on. This is when I was um, speaking in um, uh, Sweden last year. I did this Sweden Swedish conference so you can see that this is all written in Swedish. Another uh, picture of me actually with Ron and, um, and Eric uh, Swanson and all the others. This is more just PR stuff. Loved this shot. This shot was on the front page of the Union Leader because it showed the video. It showed me doing this whole thing with HGTV. More, this was just a couple of months ago. These photos are all, of, this was a publicity shot that we did. I did a speaking engagement. This gentleman um, had his limo, so we did some um, some free PR stuff with him, and just m with more local people that are important to to others. Events, events, events. Just showing all the people that I've packed into events. This was last year when I did the antique car show uh, in Lowell. The, this this woman here does um, uh, TV shows. This is the mayor of Lowell that showed up to give them a citation you know, thanking them for coming, more events that I've done. So the point of this is another one I did. You'll notice we all have on fancy shoes because, uh, girl, I love those shoes. There was an event going on uh, where I uh, had a chance to, to play with that and to publicize that. So let me see if I can figure out how to get out of this. How can I stop, stop share? Okay, so... The point of the matter is, guys, if you want to be the event, there's a lot of reasons to do that. To bring the clients to you, to build your credibility, to have the media write stories about you. You're not paying for ads that nobody cares about anyway. So we are just about at the top of the hour. If you have any questions, feel free to... Sandra says you can't see my photos. Sandra, I know you can't see them because you're on Facebook Live, but on my Zoom, you can see the photos. And uh, But if you have any questions about being the event and why you'd want to be the event, you can ask me now. But here's what I want to share with you. When I do one-on-one -on -one with people, it's anywhere from $2,500 to $10,000, depending on what I'm doing, um, what it looks like for me to work with them. Because some people need just a little bit of help, some people want me to actually show up and do the event for them. Like, in other words, um, coordinate it, 
show up, make sure that the room is, is put together properly, the whole thing. So doing one-on-one -on -one is for people that are, are, are really ready, ready to take it on and, and, and that want that one-on-one -on -one attention, want me to really help them put together their, their, um, their event, like help them come up with what their concept is, what group can they be, um, be bringing in to donate money, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm also doing is a group because I have found that I want to work with people from all over the world and I want to leverage my time. I love working one-on-one -on -one and that's all well and good, but when I have the group programs, because I'm doing worldwide net web and doing a larger event at the end of the year, I want all my clients and all of my um, people who've been through the program to be there because they know how to network. Don't you want to be in a room full of people who know how to leverage your time and theirs through building a net web? Not networking, not showing up and spraying cards everywhere, singing kumbaya, and then they go home and never call anybody. What a waste of time. Don't you want to be with me and my friends that know how to net web at the end of the year in Boston and doing it the right way? So... I've got a couple of VIP days coming up that are part of the program. If you want to be in the How to Be the Event group program, it is actually going to start. I just wrote this down. Let me look at my notes for myself. I'm going to do it on Tuesdays. I'm going to do it on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Because if I do it at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, it gives my West Coast people to pop on at noon. It gives my people around the world time that they can do it later on in the evenings, etc. So it'll be 3 p.m. I'm going to do it on Tuesdays, April the 18th and 25th, and May the 2nd, 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And I can give that all to you. Interesting that May has five weeks in it, by the way. So it's a seven-week program. And it's a seven-week program, but what I'm also doing is with that seven-week program, I'm going to add two bonus sessions at the end. Once I get a gauge for where my group is, whether it's two of you or 20 of you, and I really want to limit it to no more than 15 because I want to give you personal attention. But depending on where the group is and what they need the most, the bonus classes could be anything from putting together your speaker packet to how to collaborate with other meetups around the country and around the world where you can actually have them promoting your events, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of bonus material that we can go over that's advanced. And so I want to get a gauge, but we'll do two extra bonus sessions. So really, it's a nine-week program. You're also going to get a ticket to the, net, the, the Worldwide Net Web, the Worldwide Net Web event that I do at the end of the year because I want you to be there. Now that event itself, if somebody's going to pay to come to that event, they're going to pay $19.97 just to come to the event. Because I want people that are there that are serious. I talk all the time about let's not go to networking events just because they're free, just because they're convenient, and just because they got free beer and free pizza. Ron Kuman, who's on this webinar with me right now, he and I met at a free event. It just so happens that he both, he and I happen to be there. Now, we are two of the strongest net leveraging net webbers that I know. You will meet good people at a local event. I'm not saying don't go to a local event, but what I am saying is you want to uh, get out of your comfort zone because if somebody else paid $50 to be there or $100 to be there or $1,900 to be there, if, they, if you paid it, they did too, and it totally elevates the quality of people that you're hanging out with. So my, uh, my people who've gone through my training are going to be there for free, but anybody that pays just to come to that, nineteen ninety seven. Because I want to eliminate all the broke-as-a-joke people who have no interest in really doing anything seriously. If they're going to be there, they're going to pay, but you guys can come in for free. Um, and... I'm going to be doing a couple of full VIP days. A friend of mine, Tracy Thompson, and I are putting together some different things that we're doing. And we're doing some VIP days that are going to last all day. So my VIP days, and don't worry, I'll be putting all this, I'll write it all up. 
Um, April 7th, it's a Friday, April 7th and April 14th. April 7th from 12 noon to 7 Eastern Time, I'm going to go over all this material that we just talked about in a hardcore all day long boot camp. We'll take breaks every hour to go to the bathroom and get something to drink and have lunch. But overall, we're going to have a full day VIP day to go over all the nuances of what it means to be the event, how to be the event. So the, 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 the VIP day is just is a bonus for you that you can sit in on. I'm actually going to charge people $9.97 if they just want to be in the VIP day. If you want to be just in the VIP day and that's all you want to do, awesome. You, I, here's what I'll promise you. When you work with me, you will say, Cammie, I never thought about that. Anytime I date a guy that has a business and I start talking about this stuff, he always says, huh, I never thought about that. Anytime I get on a strategy session with somebody that I haven't worked with yet and I give them ideas, they say, huh, I never thought about that. I hear that all the time. And so I know that whether it's the VIP day that we do, whether it's the whole group, whatever that looks like, you are going to be taking notes and saying, huh, I never thought about that. I never thought about leveraging it this way. So having said all that, we are at the top of the hour. And if you want to be in the group program, the group program is $19.97. $19.97. No, not $19.97. Don't be silly. $19.97. So you can pay it up full up front. You can make it in payments. But I want to get a group of about 10 people. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I want us to have plenty of interaction. I want you to be able to get your questions answered. I want you to know what your mindset is, what your event looks like, why you're doing it, how to set them up, etc., etc., and how to use them. How to use them as a way when you are out networking so that you can not give your boring 30 second elevator pitch. Not be afraid to go out networking because you don't know what you're going to talk about. Actually have something fun and engaging to talk about in the event that you're doing. And create the resources and the relationships with the people that you're going to meet because of these events that you never would have met, met if you hadn't been doing them. I've got a friend right now that I, I'm talking to her about these events that I did 10 years ago and she's saying, well Kimmy, you know, how much money did you make from doing those events? Like, like, what was your return on investment? And I told her, I said, Ashley, think bigger than that. Do you think that in 10 years, of, when I was a real estate agent, that when I did these events, oh, a couple of, of the photos that I didn't show you was the Life's a Beach event, where we put together 100 kids that were in, inner city kids, put them on a bus. I found out that I can't just rent a bus and put your kids on it and take them somewhere. So I partnered with the Boys and Girls Club who have vouchers and buses and, and kids that, that, um, that are from the inner city. And I put them together and I brought 100 inner city kids to the beach. We provided them with t-shirts that said Life's a Beach. I had Wells Fargo and this title company and this mortgage place, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, volunteered to give over beach balls and food and sandwiches and things that we made and toys and uh, beach toys and so we just had a great day called Life's a Beach and when I put that together I had to step up, step out, be, promote this event. I had to talk, I didn't have to, I had the opportunity to talk about it. I built, relate, built relationships with mortgage people and title companies and other realtors etc etc that I never would have created had I not done this event. And I explained to Ashley, I said, don't be so short-sighted. Did you make $8,552 from that event? No. I made relationships with people that over the years I could call and say, hey, can you help me get this guy qualified? Hey, can you explain to me what this means on this contract? Hey, who do you know that is looking for a three family because I got a stinking hot deal over here, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, guys, this is about creating resources, relationships, and revenue. And it's about starting a ball rolling that grows and grows and grows like a, a, like a snowball through your whole career. I started doing this 16 years ago, and I can tell you story after story of people that are my friend today 
just because I was out promoting antique car shows or I was putting on this Life's a Beach. I'll give you an example. Tonight I'm meeting with a friend of mine, Gary, and I've got something going on in my life that is so traumatic. I've never been so traumatized in my life, and I just need to cry. I just need somebody that I know, that I've known for 15 years, that I know is not trying to take advantage of me, that I know is exactly who he says he is, that I know won't judge me, that I can just sit and cry for an hour. And I met this person 15 years ago when I was promoting an antique car show, and I walked in with this flyer, and we developed such a great relationship. He's worked on my cars at his, at his shop. He's been a judge at my antique car shows. We've told each other about different relationships. We've talked about each other's children. We have been such good friends over the year that right now, when I need a friend more than I've ever needed one in my life, I'm going to get together with him tonight and just cry like a baby. And I can't wait to do it. And these are the benefits that come from doing stuff like this. Never would have met that guy if I had just walked in with a brochure and my pen and said, Hi, I'd like to do a market evaluation on your property. He would have told me to beat the street and I never would have known him. So the point is, is this is a way to meet people that you never, ever, ever would have met them. This is a way to attract clients to you that want to do business without you chasing them down. And this is a way for you to build credibility that the media gets a hold of you and starts writing stories about you as opposed to you having your boring advertisements that nobody ever reads. If this is of interest to you, I need you to reach out to me. If you're on Facebook, send me a private message. Zoom, you got my information. That's how you got on here. Send me a message on Meetup. You can email me, cami at camibaker.com. I'll put out my information. You can call me. Apparently, um, I've, been, I've done a pretty good job of promoting my phone number because now that I'm being scammed, I'm being called and texted by all kinds of people. So I guess it's not that hard to find me. But I will put that out so that you can um, get a hold of me and let me know that you want to be a part of the group. Or if you want to talk to me about just doing the one-on-one -on -one stuff, we can do that too. I'm going to start doing this type of a webinar at least every two weeks, maybe once a week. Because what I've come to learn is right now, right this very second, I am being the event. I am being the event by inviting people who want to be the event via Facebook Live, via Zoom, via doing my uh, meetups that I do. And so for me to be able to put the word out in many different ways, if you don't want to do it live, if you want to do webinars and things like that, if you want to be the guest on people's, uh, oh, and I, I, I can also show you how to get interviewed on radio. I can show you how to start writing articles in Huntington Post and places like that so that people um, are take are, are, so that you can say that you're a contributor to the Huntington Post, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So on that note, i got to bounce. I've got another call to get off on, and we've all spent about an hour together. So I didn't get a chance to answer any questions, but as always, you can reach out to me and send them. Um, let's see if I have any other questions. People that pay, pay attention, Ron says. Ron, you are absolutely right. I have given free advice to friends for years, and guess what? They treat it as such. When you give people free advice, it goes in one ear and out the other. They don't pay attention. Real estate's a great example. They'll ask you, what, what should I do? What should I do to get my home sold? What do you think it's worth? They never listen to a word you say, but the minute that you have a client that's hired you, all of a sudden, they're following you around with a pad and a pen. Cammy, what should I do? Oh, I should take those pictures down? Okay, I'll do that. Oh, I should repaint that room? Okay, let me write that down. Like, they're taking notes and they're taking you seriously because all of a sudden they see you as the expert that you should be because they're paying you. So, have a great day, everybody. If you want to go back and see these photos, I'm not sure exactly what to do with the, with this Zoom and i got to figure out how to post them. Um, and I've got friends to help me with that, but, um, but that's the end of it. So, talk to you later. Bye-bye.